Taycan, Porsche's first fully electric car, is a magnificent machine. For those who can't get past the turbo name on the top versions, there's always the 4S or this new variant, the Taycan. No numbers, no letters, no descriptors, no controversy, just Taycan. It's the base model that ditches the front motor, but this rear driver does keep the unique two-speed transmission and a rapid charging rate of up to 270 kilowatts. Maybe use Uncle Sam's kickback for extras. It would nearly cover the premium package that would add Bose sound, better vented seats, and a panoramic glass roof, plus the $800 frozen berry paint and the interior is blackberry. Have to believe Prince is looking down on this with a grin. If I had 10 bucks for everyone that gushed over this combo, I could buy this car. Uh, well, not this one. As a Eurospec vehicle, it's headed back to Germany once U.S. automotive writers are done with it. The sweet spot for Taycan pricing settles at around $105,000, adding air suspension, all-wheel steering, Porsche torque vectoring, upgraded brakes, head-up display, and night vision easily pushes it towards $120 grand, and rating your 401k is bad advice. Cool. The $500 Porsche electric sport sound is on. Even without it, Porsche motors have a deeper tonal quality compared to other EVs. Seems like there's a bit less aural character than in turbo and 4S models, probably because of the dual motors. There is no EPA range estimate at this writing. This one has the larger 93.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion performance battery plus pack, a premium of $5,700. It's EV 101 temperature effects range. Because I care more than I should, I highly encourage anyone buying an electric car to check the consumer experience reporting on the EPA site, plus different EV forums to find the real world range because some manufacturers are very optimistic, others like Porsche, quite conservative. The single motor is tuned for a little less oomph than the rear unit found in 4S. With the standard battery, it makes 402 horsepower and 254 pound-feet of torque. And I'll note that its max charge rate is 225 kilowatts. The Plus Pack charges faster at 270, and the motor is more powerful. 469 horses and 263 pound-feet. Naturally, the pack is in the floor. There's little drama on startup. The two-speed gets one of the few electric selectors that feels right to me. Taycan's dynamics can be set up many different ways, depending on your mood and driving situation. Level 2 home charging is done on the driver's side. DC fast charging is added on the passenger fender. Porsche offers three years of free Electrify America charging. Taycan's cockpit feels like one. It doesn't have the open, airy feeling that skateboard platforms can provide. It looks great, and the Blackberry colorway is soothing, funny. I'm craving a grape Jolly Rancher right now. As equipped, there's a little more overt plastic than expected in a car this spendy. Like everything in life, more money rectifies that. There are all sorts of trim options, just like Porsche's InnoDrive Adaptive Cruise Control and Lane Keep System is a $3,600 package. It is the way. Most of the controls are haptic touch surfaces. These feel much better than most. This being a Eurospec car, there are no North American maps, so I can't judge the full operation, but I've driven US Taycans and find the configurable user interface to be quite good and responsive. Not only is there Apple CarPlay, Apple Music is built in, so if you forget your phone, you still have tunes. Taycan's back seat is custom made for two average sized adults in other other words, a little snug. Two plus one seating is optional. Evil Twin would lament the lack of seat pockets, but would enjoy the $990 rear climate zone. Heated cushions are available. Let's go to red light, green light. Green light. The base Taycan is significantly less expensive than the 4S, and its rear drive dynamic will appeal to some. The overall driving characteristics are the best I've experienced from an EV, and yes, I've driven almost all of them. Outside and in, Taycan is elegant and refined when it comes to design, and I'll point out, Porsche isn't afraid to offer paints other than white, silver, gray, and black. Thank you. 
Yellow light. It may have one of the longest EV ranges on the market, but it seems Porsche only gives worst case numbers. Maybe that's good, but it is confusing. The blazing max charge speed of 270 kilowatts depends on finding Electrify America stations, which are improving, but I've had mixed experiences with those. The crafted cabin has a bit more obvious plastic in it, if not spruced up with optional trim. And there's that console lid. Red light. Porsche goodness and build quality means Porsche pricing. Always has, always will. Those equating speed with price won't find rapid transit value in Taycan. And travelers that chronically overpack, eh, this car is not for you. At this moment in time, buying an EV requires some deliberate planning that many people won't tolerate. They aren't for everyone, but things are rapidly becoming better. That I drove this car all day, shooting running footage and doing hard launches, then returning it with nearly half the pack left says a lot. I continue to believe that owners need home charging to make EV life practical, but convinced that most buyers believe they need more range than they really do. The base version has a character that's a little different from its siblings. Even without the front motor, it remains one of my favorite cars, and that's considering vehicles twice the price. Yes, it's spendy. Still, Porsche opens the door to electrification for more buyers with the less expensive Taycan. And who else gives you choices like frozen berry paint?